it's me again here to talk about air compressors. If you guys are like I am and you're new to airbrushing, you may not know very much at all about air compressors. I know I didn't. The kit that I bought off Amazon for like 70 bucks had three airbrushes and it came with the Salon Air air compressor, which within two days of being taken out of the box promptly broke on me. So I emailed the company that sent the, uh, the items out and I told them, look, I don't know what I did wrong, but my compressor is no longer functioning. It doesn't blow air out at all. So thankfully, free of charge, they sent me another one and I didn't even have to send the other one back. So it's not like I was even out of shipping costs or whatever. So I can't be too, too upset considering, but the Salon air compressor that I got the second time within two weeks also broke. They're apparently not very good compressors for people who want to be able to airbrush for 8 to 10 hours at a time. And if you think about it, somebody doing fingernails, I'm doubting that they would be going for 10 hours at a time, say. They'd probably be dead from the fumes before they got that far. But somebody like a hobbyist like me that wants to do canvases and stuff like that, and maybe murals on my wall if I ever get time and energy and talent... Um, we might actually want to be able to paint for 10, 12 hours at a time, and the Salon Air air compressor apparently is just not up to that. Um, part of the problem I had was this PSI reader never did function properly. It was either 0 or 60. There was no in-between. Even whenever you fiddle with the knob, if you turn it toward on arrow, it's supposed to have more pressure. If you turn it toward the off arrow, it's supposed to have less. It never functioned properly, no matter what I did. Um, that was the first thing. The second thing was these particular ones are apparently prone to air leaks. It uh, started getting to the point where whenever it uh, cycled off, the air immediately all left the tank. So I opened up the back of it, and I duct taped every little nook and cranny I could find, everything that might possibly be a join somewhere, and still it continued to leak. And then one day... Because the compressor had to run continuously if I was airbrushing, it simply stopped pushing air out at all. It broke. So, obviously, this little POS compressor here, piece of you fill in the blank, is not up to what I'm trying to do. And I didn't even think I was trying to do anything that unusual, by the way. So, I went to Home Depot, and I got an actual air compressor. This one was $69, which is not bad. Uh, obviously, as you see, it has the little dials that you can decide what your air pressure is going to be. And um, I've heard people say they go as low as 5 PSI for hairlines and as high as 60 for an acrylic-based paint that may have a lot of globs in it. Um, you'll see over there I have just a foam mattress that I put the air compressor on top of to kind of keep it from shaking the floor so much and keep it from making noise. And then I pull the foam around it. It doesn't really make that much noise compared to, say, a compressor in an auto body shop that you may have heard. You don't have to wear earplugs with it or anything. But I'm a night owl, and so I'm kind of sensitive to noise anyway, and I have neighbors. So I go ahead and do that just to keep my neighbors from getting angry and coming out with pitchforks and torches. Say hi to Kibbit. Hi, Kibbit. So the only thing about using a regular compressor is it came with its own problems. OMG. First thing, as you see with the Salon air compressor, which is the only other one I've ever dealt with, there's a little area on it that you screw the hose onto. So I had to make a very embarrassing call to Home Depot to admit to them that I did not know how to attach the hose to the air compressor. And the instruction manual makers apparently thought it was so easy that they didn't have to make an instruction for that. And he told me, well, you just push the nipple end in. That's all you do. You hook it to your hose and you push it in there. And I kept thinking I was going to break something if I tried to force anything in there. So that was the first thing. You're not going to break it. It's actually meant to do that. Go ahead on with your bad self. This is the HDX, which I think he said was Home Depot Extreme or what have you brand. Um, just the cheap one off the shelf. First advantage, this has a three-gallon tank. And they go up much higher than that, but they, the cost goes up as the tank size goes up, as you can well imagine. So three-gallon tank down there versus a one-liter tank on the Salon Air. Now, I'm not sure, but I think I remember reading somewhere that there are like 3.8 liters, something crazy like that, in a gallon. So three gallons compared to one liter. 
That's 12 times as much tank space. That's 12 times as much time that you can use your airbrush before your compressor has to kick back in again, which is an advantage on noise levels, and it's also an advantage on your electricity, and it's also an advantage on you having to wait for things to fill up and having steady air pressure without the, the shimmying and all of that that goes on. The, um, the only thing is it takes a little getting used to. Now, one of the things that I made a mistake of, I didn't know any better. Whenever it comes to electronics and such, I'm kind of stupid. I have to admit it. So I didn't realize that air hoses, and this is really a dumb bunny moment, so just bear with me. But I didn't realize that these things, surprise, come in different sizes. I know that seems like a common sense assumption, doesn't it? Told you I could be dumb. Um, this one is like a three-quarter inch or something like that, whereas my airbrush obviously is, well, not. I still don't know what size that is, but it's not the size of the actual thing, I can tell you that. Um, so I had to try to figure out where in the world to get an adapter part to fit this airbrush onto this hose. As you can see, the hose itself is bigger than the airbrush fitting. OMG, what am I going to do? So I finally, and I looked and I looked and I looked and I looked and I looked. Home Depot, nothing. Lowe's, nothing. True Value, nothing. The welding store, nothing. Finally, where I found my piece was a hydraulics shop, believe it or not. The one here in Louisiana is Hydrodyne, but there are others. Um, a hydraulic shop, apparently they c carry compressors and hoses and couplings and fittings and all sorts of stuff. And I went in there and I told the guy what I was trying to do and he was like, well, I've never had this question, but I think what you need is blah, blah, blah. And it turns out he was totally right. So the first thing is you're going to have to, whenever you go buy your compressor, what I would do is I would first off find out where the hydraulic shops are in your area. Call them and ask them, do they carry um, compressor fittings like adapters and that kind of thing, connectors and all of that. And I would take your airbrush with you when you go get your compressor. And that way, whenever you get out to the car, you can go straight to the hydraulics place and you can take your hose out of the box, take your airbrush out of the box, go in, tell the guy, look, I need help, make this fit this. And he'll take it from there. He knows where everything is in the store. I went in. There were like 50,000 different pieces. And I couldn't tell what I needed. So thank God for guys who actually know what they're looking for. You can also get them on the internet. But uh, then you have to wait for them to come in. And if you're like me, patience is not one of your strongest virtues. I hate being patient. I hate it. So one of the things you're going to have to get used to with this compressor. Or with you know a regular compressor. Um, with this thing going on is that you're going to need to put Teflon tape which was like 88 cents a roll by the way it's not going to break the bank but you're going to need to put Teflon tape which is a little white very thin tape on all of the pieces that screw into anything else all the male parts in other words and you just stretch it and you put it around the male parts really well um, so that the threads are still sticking up and you use your fingers and you kind of burnish it down with your fingers and then whenever you screw it into the female part, it, oh, I know it sounds so dirty, doesn't it? YouTube is going to kick me off the internet. Um, but whenever you screw the male part into the female part, what happens is that Teflon tape will keep the air from escaping quite so bad. Now, as you can see, I'm a little paranoid, and um, I just went around the whole thing with duct tape. I said, it's not coming loose in the event of an apocalypse. I don't care what happens, it's not coming loose. But um, you may not have to go quite that far. It's just that I know that this is my favorite airbrush. This is the one that um, goes well with me. So I went ahead and taped it on. Um, I'm going to put some tape around the top of this trigger to make it a little bit easier to, uh, to push down. Maybe put a little bit of something under here for a grip to make it easier to hold on to. And then the other thing is, you'll want to... Oh, and you heard how quiet that was, by the way. Compared to the other compressor that I used to have where it had to run all the time. Whenever you just have air in the tank and you can run off that without a compressor running, it's actually a lot quieter, which is great because I like to listen to some music while I'm working. A little bit of blues, Ma Rainey, or a little bit of Marilyn Manson, whatever. Um, so that's one big advantage. 
but I would loop the hose around your arm but if you're using this kind of hose because it is bigger, it's thicker, it's more stiff. Yeah, I know it sounds dirty again, just leave me alone. Um, and it's kind of hard to work with unless you wrap it around your arm like a little bracelet. So that's it, and I hope you guys have good luck with your compressor issues. And don't give up. There is a solution. Happy crafting.